Hi, <laughs> my name is Mathilde. I'm in grade 12 and I love the sciences. Discovering the knowledge at the very foundation of our world, it just never gets old for me. But to be honest, what I love most about discovering these amazing theories is sharing my fascination for them. I mean, this is so cool. How cool is this? Don't you think this is cool? Is, in my opinion, <laughs> the best kind of conversation one can have. Unfortunately, my burning urge to share is often met by one particular reaction. A reaction that I think can be summed up by one particular expression. I like to call it the ugh science. Now, the ugh science is a mixture of boredom, disinterest, disenchantment, sometimes even slight disgust. And every time I'm met by the ugh science, I ask myself, is it me? Is it my fault that I misjudge how cool this idea is? And okay, maybe sometimes I do, but <laughs> very rarely does that happen. No, what happens generally is that I realize it isn't me. It isn't my fault. There are signs of stigma all around us, constantly dictating a negative conception of STEM. Just think of how we use the term rocket science to describe the impossible, or how the people in the white lab coats are generally cold and insensitive on TV. This negative advertising of STEM, well, it has consequences, serious consequences. Consequences that make pseudoscience's job easier, silencing facts around climate change, around vaccines. Obviously, we have a problem here. It's a very serious problem, a complex one too, but the solution, when you think about it, is pretty simple. All we need is for the scientific community to be just a little bit louder than these negative, superfluous, stigmatized images in the media. So how might we communicate science in a way that would make it just a little bit louder, more accessible, more approachable, more trustworthy? We need a communication method capable of making the abstract concrete, the unrelatable relatable. Unfortunately, scientists these days like to communicate by three-hour lectures or 50-page PDFs, none of which <laughs> do a very great job at serving our purpose here. What if we used a communication method Literally everybody knows. I don't use the term literally often, but it's applicable here. Everybody knows the human body. What if we use the human body to express scientific ideas? Have you ever heard of a medium that uses the body to express complex information? I have. In fact, I'm lucky enough to practice it every single day at my school. Dance has the power to not only revolutionize our conception of science, but our conception of who can contribute to it. Communicating science through dance is a win-win. Not only does it solve science's problem, but it solves dance's problem by making it more available and reaffirming its key, often underestimated role in Canadian society. As part of my last year with the dance program at my school, I was offered an amazing opportunity to test out the solution, communicating science through dance. I was told that I needed to choreograph a piece on some of the younger dancers, on whatever topic I'd like. I immediately thought, what would be a better guinea pig to test out than one of my favorite, most stigmatized theories of all time? Let's catch a glimpse at what Einstein's theory of special relativity might look like in movement. Here, I have matter. Matter is composed of ever-vibrating atoms that in turn are composed of even smaller particles called quarks. Quarks move at the constant speed of light. So what happens when matter moves forward? Let's take, for example, Charlotte's toe. If Charlotte's toe moves forward in space, then naturally, the atoms composing it will move too. This increases the gap between the quarks and their destination in the atom. But keep in mind that the quark's speed remains constant. 
Therefore, if the gap increases, well, the quarks will take more time. Because the quarks take more time, the atoms functions slow down. Because the atom slows down, matter itself slows down. In short, because Charlotte moves forward, time slows down for her. And the faster she will move, the slower she will experience time. How cool is that? Don't you think that's cool? Moving forward <laughs> slows time down, right? Right? But what's even cooler, what's even cooler than that is that I don't spot the ugh science anywhere. There you have it, we just proved it. Dance has the power to efficiently communicate some of science's most complex theories. Considering the next 150 years will bring us many more scientific and technological revolutions, this kind of partnership, it's especially relevant. Like never before, it will be crucial for Canadians to be informed and in touch with the scientific community. Like never before, it will be crucial for the scientific community to be in touch and adapt its communication methods. It's a two-way street solution. In fact, when you think about it, it's a solution applicable pretty much anywhere using any alternative communication method. This project is about more than communicating science through dance. It's about communicating. It's about the power of visual, physical, and dynamic dialects we might not have even considered before. Dialects that have the power to transcend those negative, superfluous, stigmatized images causing so many problems. There is an amazing amount of information out there whose current lack of availability impairs our society every single day. But there is no excuse. If a 12th grader's dance choreography can relate Einstein's theory of special relativity, there's absolutely no excuse for this lack of communication. So what idea, what information could you share? Or more importantly, how might you share it? Thank you.